Hey everyone, this is Siddharth. Welcome to my talk about the Blender MCP. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Blender is or MCP is, I'm going to go through it in a bit. But I'm going to talk about how my experience was building this, what I learned and where I see it going forward, uh, especially for more creative tools even outside of Blender. So maybe a little bit about me before we start. I've been a designer and an engineer for about eight years now. I just like tinkering with stuff. I ran my own product studio for a while and this Blender MCP was a result of some experimentation. Um, just But just before we jump into it, you know, a lot of you might be asking, what is Blender? So Blender is just a 3D tool. Think of it as a generalist 3D tool. You can import assets, you can animate them, you can export them out to like a game engine. So you can do all sorts of stuff. In Blender, you can create art, right? And the UI kind of looks like this. It's pretty complex. If you see all the different tabs everywhere, uh, on the top over here, there's a bunch of things. On the right over here, there's a bunch of things. Each of these has like 10 tabs inside it. So it gets pretty complex, which is the reason I myself could never be a good 3D artist. I was too lazy to go through all of these different tabs. And uh, uh, I, I guess that was kind of my motivation when I saw MCP and uh, I saw that MCP could let your LLM talk to any tool. My first response was, oh wait, will this make Blender easier? You know, will this make a historically complex tool easy to use? And so just to give you an idea of how it used to be, or even still is, it takes five hours to build this donut. And this is a very classic beginner's course that even I did, but uh, th this is the status quo, right? It takes five hours to go through this and build a tutorial and it should not be this hard, right? And so the whole idea behind Blender MCP uh, is, is essentially to let your LLM, like Claude or ChatGPT or whatever, right? Let them talk to Blender, which is a complex tool and let the LLM control Blender so that it can make 3D scenes for you and you just have to prompt. So in this example, this is a demo I posted. Essentially, I'm just saying make a dragon right, have it guard a pot of gold and let's see what it does. Right, so you can see it kind of gets the brief, <laughs> but also not the best, but it, it made an isometric room, it has a dragon, it kind of gave it wings, there's a pot of gold. It it made it in what I think about five minutes. I would have taken a lot longer to do something like this, to be honest. Uh, so this is, this is where I think I'm going to talk about a little bit more. So Blender MCP launched to about 11 and a half stars on GitHub at this moment. Uh, and it has almost, I think way more than 160K plus downloads. A lot of people have used it. A lot of people have built on top of it. And I'll show some examples in a bit. But how, how does it work exactly, right? So it's actually way more straightforward than it seems. So it's just essentially your client, which is Claude or Cursor or whatever, it connects to Blender through the MCP protocol, right? If you haven't seen what an MCP is, I feel like a lot of people are, have been talking about it even in this conference itself, but it helps you. It's just a standardized protocol that allows Blender to show to the client, oh, this is what I can do. Like, so that's the tools part of the MCP that, oh, these are the tools I have and this is what I can do. And so the LLM understands that and then uses those tools. So how it uses those tools is in Blender, there's an add-on that I've made uh, to execute the scripts that the LLM tells it to. So for example, Claude will say, make a dragon and it will call the exact right tools to make those make that dragon in Blender. Another big part of it is the assets, right? So the industry standard, like Rodin, which is an AI generated asset, Sketchfab and Polyhaven, things like that are now connected to the LLM. And that can basically now seamlessly, if you write a prompt to generate an asset inside Blender, it can just do that, right? So the client does all the heavy lifting essentially. Yeah, so I think Blender is a pretty big part. I think the reason this is possible in the first place is because Blender has scripting, right? So code can be executed inside Blender, which is a big part. Blender is pretty flexible with also downloading assets and importing. And so that makes 
the life like much easier honestly with assets yeah i think the cool thing here is that this is just the start but clients can connect to any api so for example right now you can write any prompt you want and it will get the right asset for you you can say i want a zombie and it will get the right asset for you ai generated on the spot you can describe it however you want and then the client is kind of the orchestrator right so the cool thing about this is i think that you can use it in any tool you want you know it could be cloud it could be cursor it could be windsurf client whatever you like uh, and you can use any language you want with it right you can use uh, a cloud and chat gpt and gemini and whatever you like so i think this is how it broadly functions together if you want more detail there is always the github but uh, i think some learnings while i was making this was that a tool with scripting can remove a lot of the heavy lifting like i mentioned the blender thing right because cloud is good at writing code it can very easily translate it to blender and blender can execute that code and that can be for modeling for getting the right assets anything um the second part i learned was that mcps get really confused with tools so uh, i learned this the hard way but where i had to refactor the blender mcp quite a few times because i had about i think 14 or 15 tools and it kept getting confused on what to use so tools can be something like create a cube create a sphere execute code uh, get this asset from rodin for example right so how does it know which one to choose because it's a little bit non deterministic right so in that case it's always better to kind of keep the end user experience in mind and making sure it's really lean and every single tool is different from each other so that cloud knows exactly which tool to pick um and a good segue from that is don't bloat the ux just because you can i think this is more a learning from making it open source which is just i think there's a lot of features that can be added but i think the reason blender mcp works is because it's lean and a bit of a generalist tool so it can get a lot done and another learning has been that the models do get better the underlying models so while 3d models aren't great yet and llms have a very poor understanding of 3d in general they're getting way better so even in the time i released it to the time it was out gemini 2.5 came out and that made it already 3x better right so i think those are some things to keep in mind when i'm building at least the next mcp now sure now i've put this out in the wild and now comes the creative tools part right what's what's changed uh, how are people using it so historically like i said it's been pretty complex to use 3d tools and now suddenly the barrier of access has reduced and so this is a scene i made in 2 minutes <laughs> you know just got the right assets ai generated all of them these assets don't exist otherwise they're all ai generated and just place them tell cloud how to place it tell them i need a magical mushroom and it just creates everything from scratch and i can just take a picture of it essentially this is uh, another one where this is another one where they're creating a cat and they're also getting all the right ai generated assets and then they animated it a little bit to make it feel real and you can do all this in less than an hour now where this would have taken way more time earlier right this is another one where where they're providing reference images right so they just gave an image of a living room and now it's recreating that getting all the right assets again this would have taken quite a long time earlier to just make this but now it's a matter of minutes some other cool things this person uh, on twitter they're generating terrain so they have an image which they gave to the blender mcp uh, and inside cursor they're trying to create create this game on blender and so it generates the right terrain for you it even uses these nodes right which is which is, itself has a learning curve to set up these really complex textures and normal bumps and so on and so it does that all of that for you just because blender can execute code right This is I love this one. This is a game that someone created. This is essentially the idea is that they go into someone's lungs and they have to collect bone fragments um, to to win the game to connect the rib cage together. And so Blender MCP again was used to set the scene to create assets. I'll, I'll just play it shortly. <laughs> that 
um so you can create games now <laughs> and this is a uh, completely done in blender mcp it's a pretty high fidelity of uh, you know glossy this iridescent material and a camera animation all done in minutes by just prompting through ai right uh, so these are the things that are being unlocked um this is a uh, another cool thing that i saw that people have been using it for so this person prompted the mcp to create a racing track and then animate the cars so you can see on the side the mcp is running and uh, on the right side this blender is running essentially and so this person created this and now you can see if i skip to the end a little bit this person now placed the camera angle such that the cars feel like they <laughs> feel like a movie and then they used runway to convert them to an actual clip so hey here you can see it whoops yeah there you go yeah so they animated the camera and now this is through runway so it's another medium that's been unlocked basically where your even filmmakers or creators all kinds of creators can use this not just 3d artists and this is just an example of some donuts which are one shot prompts this is just you know like in a minute uh, it can be may be uh, made way better of course but uh, you know as a start from 5 hours to a minute is not too bad so this is essentially unlocking a whole new world of creators to just come in and when the barrier has been so high now it's just gone and you can just write what you want what's in your head and get there with just enough prompting right and so i think in general in a broader sense mcps are changing how creative tools work and um, just an example of that i was trying to experiment with this a little bit we were talking about the client right being the orchestrator where it talks to external sources like the api it talks to local tools like blender so what if we extend that anal analogy a little bit and the client orchestrates between all these different things so let's say the user wants to make a game and people don't come in with the intent of learning unity right they want to make a game and people don't come in with the intent of learning ableton which is a music creation software they come in with the intent of making music so how do we capture that intent and then transform it so that this person doesn't have to worry about the underlying tools but also it can match their vision so i feel like mcps are going to be a fundamental glue that holds this thing together and these llms are going to be at the center at the intelligence uh, at the center of it right so for example let's say i want to make a game so i tell it oh i want to make a game and uh, this this llm is all they interface with right and this llm can then call blender and make an asset for the game the right assets it can then call unity and make a whole game engine unity is a game engine and so it can put it in add collisions add logic and make a whole game out of it it can call the right apis to get the right assets and animate it and stuff like that and it can also call ableton which will create the soundtrack for the characters for the game right so you this person doesn't really care about everything outside of it but now that mcp exists the client can literally just orchestrate between all of these and uh, choose the right tools and make a game so i don't think we're very far away from this to be honest and uh, i made like a really short demo to demonstrate how it could work so in this one i'm creating a dragon and i'm just asking it to give a soundtrack so i also created the ableton mcp which is what you see on the bottom left which is essentially you can prompt to create music so i thought let's try and combine them and see what happens So you can see that it creates it gets the dragon that I described it creates some sinister lighting because it's supposed to be a villain and it also calls ableton to create a soundtrack for it sure the quality might not be the best in the world right now but at the same time it's you can see it's only a matter of time before it starts stitching all these pieces together to create something insane 
so a few questions honestly that this brings up for me personally is that is it just going to be tools talking to each other now right are are people just going to interface with the llm and don't don't have to even worry about learning the complex ui beneath it because that's what seems to be happening right it's a whole new group of people that can come in and create now and they can do it without learning the ui behind it and our creatives going to be more like orchestra conductors because because now i think rather than knowing how to play the instrument it's more important how to get the vision in your head and place it to the llm so the llm can execute it for you and how you're conducting these different pieces that go together so it's an interesting time i think to be a creator and mcps are pretty much right at the center of it and i think some of these examples like blender mcp and ableton mcp are examples of that and from that there have been spurred a lot of mcps for other creative tools like i've seen for post gis houdini unity unreal engine there have been so many so it's only a matter of time i feel that you know this everyone can become a creator uh, which is pretty cool uh thank you yeah that's me and uh, yeah you can find me on github at ahuja said and you can find me at twitter at uh, said ahuj um yeah so thank you thank you for coming to this and if you have any thoughts please leave them in the comments thank you